Get ready, get set for the best movie and pop culture talk in the universe. It's the Good Brothers on Mercado Airwaves with your hosts, Alex Mercado and Mike Mercado. What is going on, friends? Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of The Good Brothers. I'm your host, Mike Mercado, riding solo today, guys. The Good Brother Alex is coming back from Ohio, had a huge competition this past weekend, so save travels to The Good Brother. But we're here today because I have the floor. It is our time. You and I get to talk about Star Wars Episode Eight: The Last Jedi, heavy on the spoilers. Tune in next week for our Christmas episode. The good brother Alex will be back, and you will get a chance to hear his thoughts on his review of Star Wars The Last Jedi. He will go heavy on the spoilers, what he liked, what he didn't like, and where he ranks it in the Star Wars universe when it comes to rankings. I, he and I have had arguments for about 48 hours now on where we rank it within the other movies. And today I get a chance to talk to you all about what I thought of the biggest movie of 2017. Opening it up to a $220 million opening weekend. Getting a 93 on Rotten Tomatoes from the critics. A 56 on the audience side. Very interesting to see the audience being split 50-50. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Getting an A on Cinema Score. It's time to go spoiler heavy on Star Wars Episode 8, The Last Jedi. Stay tuned. Mercado Airwaves is brought to you by supporters at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. If you would like to support Mercado Airwaves, visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. Find us on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves. Keep up to date with the show on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. You can follow Alex on Twitter at Mercado21Alex. Follow Mike on Twitter at mmercado2333 and on Instagram, MikeMercado2333. Thank you for keeping it tuned in to us, guys, here on The Good Brothers on Mercado. Airwaves. I'm your host, Mike Mercado. The good brother Alex is coming back from a competition in Ohio, so he will be here next week in our Christmas episode, and you will get your chance to hear his thoughts of Star Wars Episode 8, The Last Jedi. But let's get right into it, guys. First of all, before I get into detail of what I liked about this movie, again, last warning, heavy on the spoilers. I really enjoyed this movie. To me, the big thing about a Star Wars movie is if you listen to our our lead up into The Last Jedi, the one thing that Star Wars has a feel, Star Wars has a structure, but Star Wars isn't bound to these stories, to like to certain like they have to do certain things. And this movie, I've heard one of the criticism is that it's very boring and it it just it there's nothing new in this movie. To me, what I commend Ryan Johnson directing episode eight and what I think Disney really loved about him and why they gave him a new trilogy is the risk that he takes. And to me, some of the biggest risks are the humor and Ray's parents' lineage and the way he deceives everybody. And essentially, to me, what what Ryan Johnson did and what Disney did was they they made you believe that if you had the answer that Star Wars fans know exactly what we could see this coming a, a mile away this is just going to be Empire so this needs to happen this needs to happen this needs to happen and they said no sit down shut up and enjoy granted this movie does have its issues and I can see why people wouldn't enjoy it when it comes to you know living up to the original trilogy and and for some the prequels but For it to be 50-50 like it is online, I I find it really interesting. So let me go ahead and just – I really enjoyed it. I love this movie. Uh, I'll give you my my ranking of where I put it uh, later on before we get out of here. But, uh, you know, I don't want to take a lot of you guys' time because I know, you know, it's all over the internet. Everybody's giving their thoughts. So I just want to get into what I liked and what I didn't like about this movie. Uh, The things that I liked, Kylo Ren, uh, Adam Driver was put into a whole new level into this movie. The way that – he tricks essentially Snoke into, you know, as, as, as essentially assassinating him uh, was was amazing, and just seeing his character development as the movie progressed, and that he was complex. The the way he was looking at Leia in that that scene that you see in the trailer as they're they're attacking them, and and uh, General Akbar R.I.P. Uh, gets killed. Daisy Ridley as Rey, phenomenal. Her story arc, the way, again, she's developing in this universe. Uh, I'm all in on Daisy Ridley and Rey. Poe Dameron, played by Oscar Isaac. Again, probably the most significant character development, the most that you could you can really, that's easy A to B to C, and it works. So I love I loved that. 
and of course Luke Skywalker, Mark Hamill, and uh, Princess Leia by the late great Carrie Fisher both showed up. Uh, a great swan song for uh, Carrie Fisher. Going to be very interesting to see how she, how they develop Princess Leia, whether they recast Princess Leia or they find a way to do that uh, General Tarkin like in Rogue One where they uh, maybe get her daughter and then do that computer CGI nonsense. So uh, that's going to be very interesting. For those of you who are wondering, I love the scene of the her getting blown up and her using the Force to pull herself back in, in space. You know, it, it, as visual, would I have maybe filmed Carrie Fisher doing it a different way or posing a different way or shot it a different way? Maybe, but the impact of knowing how strong she was, like at this whole time, like, yeah, she is the ultimate, you know, Jedi. Like she's always had those powers on there, like, and she just never had to use them. She's just that badass. So I love that scene. Luke Skywalker, you know, it's funny. I know a lot of people were turned off about the humor in this movie. And that's one of those things I, I love about the risk Ryan Johnson takes is he puts a lot of humor in this movie. And there is a lot of times where I can imagine it takes people out of it, but for me, a lot of the jokes landed and the scene where Ray gives Luke the lightsaber the way the Force Awakens ends into The Last Jedi and he just tosses it over his shoulder. To me, that was funny. To me, that was, you know, it's sit back and relax. It's like not everything has to be these monumental moments. The movie was filled with them. And like it's easy to nitpick like because I think... Star Wars fans and fans of these type of genres, anything superhero, anything that has such rich lore, we start putting pieces together and we want certain things. We want the movie to develop a certain way because that's how we've been portraying it in our mind for two years and we see these previews and they do a great job of not spoiling for spoiling it for you so you're able to really put your own mind and think of what this movie is going to be. And that's, again, the risk Ryan Johnson takes is every answer he could have given as fan service or just to give in. They didn't do. And that includes the the storyline of Ray's parenthood, uh, parentage. Like, the fact that we find out that it's nobody, that it, that it, that it is nobody, that, that nobody important, that she is just, a, a sh, uh, for using the Latin term, a term, she's just a street rat. And I think it, it makes... I understand people's wants of her wanting to be a Solo or a Skywalker or a Kenobi. And I get it because we love those characters and we're afraid those characters are not going to move on past these movies. But the whole idea of the Force, and I get into this argument why I hate the midichlorians, is the Force has always been meant to – that anybody could touch it, that it's just nature, that it's just the universe, it's love, it's it's life, it's all that. And when you start doing it that it's a lineage, then you get into that point of like Game of Thrones where it's like – the bloodlines are the reason this happens, and it, it, there's nothing special about you. It's just your parents just so happen to conceive you. And I'm glad that we're kind of getting away from that, even with Kylo Ren. And the strongest point of the movie to me, though, the, the moment the movie goes from being a really good Star Wars movie to a great Star Wars movie is when what eventually we find out is Snoke uh, letting the com uh, connecting Kylo Ren and Rey, Daisy Ridley and Adam Driver is the relationship between Kylo and and Rey. Like it's intense. It's it's you just feel the chemistry. You feel the the growth of what is going to become these two characters. And that's what I appreciated about what they delivered in it. It's I'm excited for Episode Nine to see where these two go. And I love the fact that. He Kylo Ren straight up kills Snoke, and the way he does it, and and that whole scene of you're they're working together, and you're wondering like you really want this. Everything tells you that these two should work together, should you know, should be helping each other. But you also know that they say throughout the whole movie, when darkness rises, so will the light. There's always a counterbalance, and you need these two characters. And quite frankly, from the way the whole movie, and again, one of the risks I I love about it is. They're moving forward. They're not looking back to ghosts and past religions, aka the Jedi and the Sith. They're moving forward. And that's that that's kind of what it has to be. And it and kind of mimics and mirrors today's world and today's political and social climate. So, you know, you have now Kylo Ren is is the bad guy. Snoke is gone, he's not coming back, and now you have only Husk, who I actually loved, uh, 
Donald Gleason as Husk, uh, General Husk. You all, you saw a lot of him uh, again being swarmy and, and and you know slimy and still you know being able still being formidable though. And and there's a great scene with him in that chamber after Snoke is dead where he sees the gun and then he kind of hides it because Kylo Ren is coming back too. Um, but yeah, the, the the connection that that you see between Daisy Ridley and Adam Driver is just. You know, every moment those two are on screen and, and whenever they're on screen together, it's electricity is in the air. And like it's special. Like that is special. Quick shout out to uh Laura Dern who plays uh Holdo, I believe that's how you say it. Great scene with her and what she ends up doing, how to how she sacrifices herself. So some things that I didn't like about the movie, because you know, every every movie no movie's perfect. You know, and movies have some some negative things about it. I love these two characters. I, I love things that happen to them. I love the way they found the way to still make me care about them. But their storyline to me was the weakest point of the film. And it was also not just a weak point of the film. It's probably, it probably could be taken out. And at least to me, it's, it's the point it, when I say the movie is a little long, it's because of this scene. It is a uh, Finn and Rose Finn played by John Boyega Rose played by uh, Kelly Marie Tran. Um, their story, essentially they go to cancel bite this, uh, this like casino and it's the rich that uh that helps supply the the new order with their the first order excuse me with their their you know tie fighters and all their their machines and all their weaponry and then we also find out that re- the resistance is also being supported by them and how you know war is complicated kind of again using that social satire and we get to see Benicio del Toro's character who I was looking forward to who I kind of like he has a stutter doesn't bother me but just that storyline that it doesn't play out very well. Essentially, he betrays them, and it's there's no payoff. He really doesn't come back. He doesn't get comeuppance. So, uh, to to be honest with you, it's pr- the weakest part of the film. I really don't want to talk about it. And y- as soon as the the movie goes to cancel bite, and whenever this happens, it's a screeching halt. And that's how you could see it, that it's just a different feel. It feels like it's a different movie. Um, Mas Kanata, uh, again, a character who controversial i i think it was a dumb character in the force awakens i think it's a dumb looking character lupita nawanga plays uh, mas Kanata, great actress but nothing special to me about that um captain phasma played by the great gwendolyn christie again a waste um you know it, it just you drop the ball they drop the ball on her again and i hope they don't they don't try I hope they don't go for a third time. You know, there's just no reason for it. You've already messed it up. I don't think any, I don't think JJ is going to do any better after you know what we saw with the Force Awakens. Uh, Benicio del Toro again played DJ. Uh, just the fact that the character meant nothing, and that whole cancel bite thing again. I can't get over how bad that was. That was prequel bad. And everybody who listened to the, to me talk about the prequels, that that's where I ranked that whole scene. And some of the humor didn't hit for me at certain times. I definitely think that. They took a risk having so much humor in it and in certain scenes risking to try to get the laugh. But I always think that they landed. Even if I didn't necessarily love it, they always landed. And it was creative and nothing seemed forced. Ha, forced. But nothing seemed forced. So I, I appreciate that, you know, and, and that's something that's hard for movies. Humor is impossible, you know, for a lot of people to get into film. So, you know, shout out to Ryan Johnson and, and the chemistry that a lot of these, you know, actors and actresses had, you know, in this movie. One of the things you're going to see, especially this holiday season, the Porgs, you see them all over the com- the commercials, all over the previews. They're amazing. They're cute. They, they don't, they're not distracting. They don't take from the movie. There's actually a lot of cool, like, you know, what Star Wars always has, what always really good Star Wars movies have. They have a lot of cool alien creatures that you see in Cancel Bite. Some of it, the CGI, I thought CGI was really great in the movie, but, you know, you never get a chance to really see all of them, but the Porgs, you get, a, you get to see a hell of a lot of them, and uh, they're really cool. So I think Porgs, yes, they hit their home run. Going really fast to the dislikes, one of my favorite characters, if not my favorite character in all of Star Wars is Chewbacca, and for him not to get so much love in this movie kind of upsets me but he every time he's on the screen Chewbacca is is the man he's the Groot he's the Incredible Hulk he's he's the he's that kind of character in this in this uh, movie universe that every time he's on the screen he just 
he saves it and, and he sells it and it's just, it's the best. I love Chewbacca. But you know what, guys? I've taken up enough of your time. Before I give you my score, we'll be right back here on The Good Brothers on Mercado Airwaves. If you would like to support Mercado Airwaves, visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. Find us on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves. Keep up to date with the show on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. You can follow Alex on Twitter at Mercado21Alex. Follow Mike on Twitter at mmercado2333 and on Instagram, MikeMercado2333. Mercado Airwaves is brought to you by supporters at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. After a new Star Wars movie comes out, where is it ranked among the legacy, among the saga of films? So for all of those who haven't listened to it yet, you could go back. We actually, The good brother Alex and I actually did a two-part series where we went and we reviewed and scored and then ranked all the past Star Wars movies Number one to me is is Empire, and it, to me Empire is just just almost the peak of of that of the adventure movie, and of course Star Wars movies. I love Rogue One. Rogue One is my second favorite Star Wars movie. I think this movie has a lot of people. I know this is a lot of people's favorite. I think it's better than Return of the Jedi. I don't think it's better than A New Hope. I love A New Hope. So if you're asking me right now to rank it, it goes Empire Strikes Back at one. Rogue One at 2, A New Hope at 3, and The Last Jedi at 4, bringing Return of the Jedi to number 5. That is where I rank it. I give it 4 out of 5 pizzas. It's a movie that may be a little long, takes a lot of risk, gives you a lot of different directions and answers certain questions, and it it's not going to be everybody's favorite, the results. A lot of people are not going to be happy because a lot of people had certain expectations, certain thoughts, certain wishes, and it just doesn't play out that way. Do I think this movie's bad? No. Do I think it's crazy that people are upset about it? Yeah, I think it's a little, it's a little crazy, but that's the beautiful thing about film. It's subjective. You know, you listen to The Good Brother and I argue every single week we do a a podcast. And we're going to argue next week on our Christmas special because we're going to be able to listen to Alex's review and we're going to disagree on a lot of, a lot of things. Because he has this as one of his top three. And like to me, to crack the top three of Star Wars is some pretty crazy things. That's the fact that Rogue One did it was, you know, shocking to me in my list. But I think this movie is a must watch. I think it does the name Star Wars justice. And it shows that even with all the pressure, even being within the machine of Disney, even just everything that comes with having to create a Star Wars movie. This movie delivers it on it, and it leads us into episode 9. Quite frankly, I'm more excited for episode 9 than I was for episode 8. And when you're making these type of franchises, there's nothing else that you can ask for. They gave us a fun Star Wars movie during the holiday season. There's nothing better than that. At least to me, friends. I want to know, though, what did you think about Star Wars The Last Jedi? Follow us all over social media. I'm on Twitter at Mercado2333. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. Subscribe to us at YouTube.com slash Mike Mercado2333. Every one of our episodes of The Good Brothers, Pizza Night with Nick and Mike, and every one of our UFC interviews with past legends and champions of the sport are brought to you by our amazing producers over at Patreon.com slash Mercado. Mercado Airwaves. If you would like to sponsor the show, power our interviews, or you would like to get any one of these episodes ad free or before anybody else, visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. We have a tier just for you. We're on iTunes. Subscribe, like, rate, review us. That's iTunes.com slash Mercado Airwaves. For all you Android and Google users, we're on SoundCloud, SoundCloud.com slash Mercado Airwaves. And you want to see behind the scenes stuff, anything that we're working on, follow us on Instagram, Mike Mercado 2333. Thank you so much, guys. Please be part of the conversation. What did you think about The Last Jedi? I am so interested to talk about it with all of you. I'm so happy now that it's been out for a few days. We could finally get deep into the conversations about one of our favorite franchises, not just in movies, but in all of pop culture. Next week, it is our Christmas special. And on that episode, you will be able to listen to the good brother, Alex Mercado, Give his thoughts on Star Wars, The Last Jedi. You're not going to want to miss that because we are definitely going to fight and break the internet. We will see you next time on The Good Brothers here on Mercado Airwaves. Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining us here on The Good Brothers here on Mercado Airwaves.